One of the advantages of structural equation models is that these models can be tested. However, sometimes research give too much meaning to the test result. Let's take a look at what testing structural equation models actually means and what kind of conclusions you can draw from a test that either rejects the model or fails to reject the model. The idea of model testing is that when you have an over-identified model, a model with one than more than zero degrees of freedom, then that model implies constraints on your covariances. For example, in this um, example from previous video, I <coughs> calculated an over-identification test. So we have six variances and covariances. We have five free parameters. So they imply a constraint that covariance between uh, x and y divided by covariance between x and m must equal covariance between m and y divided by variance of m. And how we construct a test is that we take this difference here and we compare that difference to zero. If it's slightly greater than zero, then we conclude that that can't be attributed to chance only and the model should be rejected. It's not an adequate representation of our data. We, in practice, we use the chi-square test. Let's go through five examples on model testing to understand what model tests, how they work and what they tell us. So our example data is here. We have thousand observations. The number of observations doesn't really matter, but I generated 1000 just to um, have sufficient statistical power to re clearly reject incorrect models. We have uh, three variables x, y and z that are uh, roughly have the same variances. They're roughly, uh, they're correlated to the same degree. So this is the covariance matrix. And let's first estimate the regression model here. So uh, the regression model is saturated, means that the decrease in freedom are zero, nothing is being tested. So we have uh, six unique units of information from the data, three variances, three covariances, and we are estimating six things. We estimate three, uh, two variances, one error variance and, and one covariance and two regression paths. So nothing is being tested. This is saturated model. The fact that the chi-square test does not reject this model does not mean that this model is correct for the data because we could equally as well swap y and x and have x as the dependent variable, y as the predictor and the model would still fit perfectly because it's a saturated model, zero degrees of freedom. It cannot be tested. Now let's take a look at the model that actually can be tested. So uh, if we remove this exogenous covariance here, we gain one degree of freedom. So every time you take uh, a parameter out from the model, you gain decrease of freedom. And uh, that has a testable implication. This model is rejected. It has one degree of freedom, it is over identified, but we need to understand what is being tested. So can we based on this model, claim that x and z cannot be causes of y because chi-square test reject this model. We cannot. When we uh, test the model, we need to understand what are the constraints that are being tested. So this model allows the free estimation of x and y relationship, z and y relationship, but it constrains the z and x relationship to be zero. So the only constraint that this model implies is that x and z are uncorrelated. And if we can look at, take a look at this uh, sample covariances, model implied co covariances calculated using the tracing rules and uh, residual covariances, which are the difference between the implied and the sample covariances, we can see that the correlation between x and z is not well explained by the model. Then when a correlation is not or covariance is not well explained by the model, we need to look at, okay, so what covariance does the model imply? It implies a zero covariance. Why is there zero covariance? Well, there's zero covariance because we constrain it to be so. So this is uh, what is being tested is whether X and Z are uncorrelated. And that has, that has no link for into the claim that X and, 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 and Z would not be or would be causes of Y. So it's completely uninformative of the claim that these are causes of Y. Unfortunately, this kind of models are fairly, are, are sometimes appear in published research or papers that I, I get to review. The, the reason is that some SCM software require that you manually add these correlations. So it, it's uh, possible that the researcher draws a regression model and forgets to ask, add this covariance. Sometimes when we see path diagrams in published papers, 
these covariance between the exogenous variables are not included in, in the model diagram even though from the decrease of freedom you can see that they were actually estimated from the data or they were treated as fixed in case in which case they are not tested at all. Another th uh, scenario where this can occur that these x's are correlatively unconstrained is that you have exogenous variables that are observed like this case we have x and z we have actual scores and then you have latent variables that are unobserved and are measured with indicators. I'll talk about those in a separate set of videos. In some statistical software those two sets of variables are constrained to be uncorrelated by default and then you would see that all these observed variables are uncorrelated with all the, uh, the latent variables and what is being tested is not whether there's a causal relationship from the var x variables to the y but whether those two sets of variables are mutually uncorrelated. I have not never seen a paper that actually justifies that kind of constraint so whenever you see a constraint between exogenous variables th uh, that is quite likely to be just a data analysis mistake. Let's take a look at the, the next model. So what if we reverse the causality? We say that y is a uh, cause of x and z and not the other way around. Well this is also a saturated model. It, uh, nothing else being tested and it fits the data perfectly. If we remove this covariance here then uh, we gain one degree of freedom. So we have one degree of freedom here and what is actually being tested is also now important to understand. So one could make a claim that because this model does not fit the data then uh, y cannot be a cause of x or cannot be a cause of z. Well that claim is not valid. The reason why it's not valid is that the only thing here that is being uh, tested is uh, does the model explain the correlation between x and z well? We can see from the residuals that that covariance is not well explained by the model. So uh, what are we are testing is does the model explain that covariance well and, and nothing else. Then we need to consider so what is the implied correlation and what implies correlation between x and z and it is the common cause y. So with this kind of model configuration what you would be testing is whether the correlation between x and z can be fully attributed to the common cause y. These models again are something that a researcher may might estimate accidentally. There is hardly ever reason to constrain this to be uncorrelated but in some statistical software that do SCM you will need to add that correlation manually because it's not added by default. So it's very important to understand what exactly is being estimated before you and what exactly is being tested before you make any grand claims about that, uh, what the, the test result implies. Let's take a look at the final example, model 5. So model 5 is a bit more complicated and this is actually a model that is very common in the literature and it's actually used for two different purposes. It is a full mediation model so we say that z influences x, x influences y and uh, it's rejected by the chi-square so we know that the full mediation model is not adequate representation of the data. The next thing we need to again understand what part of the data the model does not explain and we can see that it is the correlation between z and y and uh, but what is being tested it's uh, actually what is being tested is uh, whether it's not, whether uh, this is a partial mediation model. So many researchers would uh, argue that because the full mediation model is rejected therefore the data must follow a partial mediation model. Another uh, group of researchers might argue that this is actually an endogeneity test. So z is an instrumental variable, x is a potential endogenous variable and this is a test of whether the error term of x correlates with error term of y. So that's an endogeneity test and this is actually a, a fairly common endogeneity test. Or we could just argue that this is a test whether uh, z and the error term of, of y are correlated like so or we could argue that there's a feedback loop between y and z. They are like tens of different models that you can construct using just three variables. So we cannot use the rejection of full mediation model as a criterion for acceptance of another model because there are multiple different models that would explain the data well. So what exactly is being tested here is whether the full mediation model fully explains the covariance between z and y and nothing else. 
if that full mediation model is rejected and if we consider alternative models, then we need to consider based on theory, what is the most uh, plausible alternative model? Is it more plausible that there's a full mediation or is it more plausible that X and Y actually have a common cause that is not included in our model or some other configuration? Then we go based on that. So we should not automatically say that because the full mediation model is rejected, therefore part partial mediation model should hold for the data. Let's summarize these five models that we tested. So we have uh, the regression model, zero degrees of freedom cannot be tested. We have the regression model where the X variables are uncorrelated, that can be tested. We have the common cause model where uh, X and Z are correlated. We have common cause with uncorrelated errors and then we have the full mediation model. So we can see that uh, we, uh, based on this summary, we can clearly see that testing a model does not tell us anything about directionality. Because comparing the first model against the third model, where we just reverse the paths and it doesn't tell us anything. Both fit the data perfectly. Some people, some researchers are tempted to conclude that because of we can, we could actually compare model two, model four and model five, because they all have one degree of freedom and then conclude that the full mediation model here is much more plausible for the data than this regression model. That is an invalid conclusion. This regression model only tests whether two, these x and z are uncorrelated. It does not test whether x affects y. x to y is, is freely estimated. So you are, you are actually testing uh, of whether you are omitting something in the model. You are not testing whether there is something in the model that shouldn't be there. So we are testing constraints. We are not testing for unnecessary things. And this is important to understand. So to summarize, uh, these tests tell us whether the current models explain the covariances and really not much more. And uh, then you need to have a really strong theoretical reasoning to argue that another model will be better. They are important to understand which covariances are not explained. So you need to look at the residuals from the model. So if the model fails, it means some of the covariances are not well explained by the model. You need to understand which ones before you make any claims about the model, model itself. Then we have uh, the, uh, these don't tell us anything about the uh, specific alternative model. So model tests are only about the model at hand and they don't tell us, they cannot tell us anything about any potential alternative model. So the fact that full mediation model is rejected does not imply that partial media somehow should be accepted. And finally, they tell us nothing about the direction of effects. So direction on effect of effects can only be influenced or, or assessed by having a research design that allows you to measure effects over time, just having a cross-sectional data set where you estimate effects in the two different ways will not do that for you.